before we laugh. Hello! <laughs> Welcome to our live chat. We're going to be talking about writing with the five senses today. Um, if you have questions, definitely leave them in the comments because that will give us more things to talk about. Please give us maybe, questions. Maybe I don't have a lot of things for us to talk about today because maybe I've been reading all weekend. I don't know. It's, it's a possibility. <laughs> but as we can start and go around and talk about like what our like favorite sense is to like include in our writing or like our favorite ones to like read in books. So the first person for me is Desiree. Okay. Um, my favorite sense is probably smell. It's just, it's really interesting to me. Like, the smell of rain and the smell of, like, dirt are, like, my two favorite, like, smells to put in my writing for some reason. Hmm. And then I have Rachel. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm a, just a giant imagery person, so tell me what you see. Tell me every minute detail of what you are seeing. <laughs> and I like that, because I like to, like, really perfectly picture a scene. Mm -hmm. so that's, uh, yeah, give me all the details. Yeah. I think that's why I'm also very detail-oriented in my writing, which I definitely need to <laughs> learn to cut back on. <laughs> well, when I was like, thinking about this, I was like, probably most of us use like visual the most, because like that's our dominant sense in sight. Mm -hmm. and, like, and it's what you use in books to describe things, is like, what your characters are seeing. I think it's like, what most people use the most. Mm -hmm. Megan? I really like feeling like I love writing about like their palms are sweating and how that feels and the ground under their feet and just all the different feels I like. Mine's the same. I was going to say touch is my favorite. Like the feel like the grain of the wood or like yeah I like touch a lot. Hmm. Describing how things feel to the characters. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um let us know what your favorites are in the comments, because I want to know what people use a lot. I actually have feelings about about smell being used in writing. That's Desiree's favorite, because mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to know what everyone else's opinion is. Do you think that um, smell, like <laughs> the smell of other characters, is used too often in YA books? Because I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about this before. <laughs> I've noticed that it's very common that like the love interest will have there will be like two smells that define them always. And like yeah. mint, mint like, or honey. Oh, God. Yeah, one of them is typically sandalwood as well. Yes. Yeah, I was just thinking <laughs> that. Like, and a lot of times there's no reason for it. That's that's what really gets me is there's no reason that they smell like that's why because I was thinking about it and actually the Raven Boys does this a lot because Gansey smells like meat or uh, mint and wheatgrass. Which the right, wheatgrass is never always, explained. But no, the mint he's always eating mint leaves. <laughs> yeah, like of course he smells like mint. He's chewing or mint. He's chewing mint leaves all the time. But you know, like a lot of times it's not explained. It's like why do they randomly smell like these two things? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, also, also for anybody watching, uh, there's just gonna be pointless Raven Boys yes. comments because That's we've all been on a yeah. Raven Boys binge. Yeah. <laughs> does Doesn't Gansey have like a wheatgrass plant? In his apartment, I feel like he's he a mint yeah. plant. Yeah, he's a mint plant. I thought I thought he had a wheatgrass one too. Maybe he does. But maybe I'm making that up. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> I just feel like, like I'm just thinking he has a wheatgrass plant in his yeah. apartment, so we can like make smoothies out of it. Like, yeah, <laughs> I can. I can see Gancy juicing. He probably juices. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I kind of can see that. <laughs> I'm thinking he's just he's like trying to push it on Ronan and <laughs> be like, "Here, have some juice." Ronan's like, "No." No. <laughs> <laughs> We're just, like, swearing at him, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I do think that gets, like, used a lot. Like, it's always... And, yeah, Megan and I were talking about this because there was a book that did it a lot. Because a lot of times it'll be repeated over and over again, too. But I was like, I couldn't, like, tell you, like, two things that my husband smells like. Like, he smells like his deodorant. Like, the deodorant he uses, yeah. which is a good thing. But, like, other than that, like, I can't pick out two things. Hmm. So, that, that's, like, a trend. And it kind of bothers me a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I, I've never met another person, like, I've never met a human that actually smells like sandalwood before. Yeah. I don't know what it smells like either. Yeah. 
<laughs> like I know people who have distinct smell. Like I can. This is maybe weird, but I've known Megan long enough that I can like recognize her smell. Like if she's been in my apartment, I'm like, oh, this pillow <laughs> smells like Megan. But I can't tell <laughs> you what it smells like. It just smells like Megan. It smells like her parents' house. Like yeah. But like yeah. I can't name two specific things that it smells like. Yeah, I've tried to figure out what it is, but like it's just it's the smell, yeah. but you don't know what. Uh huh. Yeah, yes. I think there's some like funny like sensory like cliches almost because there's also a lot of times when characters will kiss, there will be like the two things they taste like, and I'm like, mm, yeah, they yeah, taste that's like true. what ate maybe, but yeah, that really it always tastes like chocolate. I don't understand. <laughs> 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 yeah, it almost feels like a way of telling the yeah. the person likes the way they smell. Like, yeah. oh, they have these two yeah. distinct smells. I like it. Yeah. And I recognize it when I smell it. Yeah. Which is a thing that happens, like, when you, like, a lot of times when you like someone, like, you recognize their smell and, like, you know, you, you like, wear their jacket. Right. And you're like, oh, it smells like them. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. But you usually can't name the smells. Yeah, no, not usually. Yeah, yeah. but I get why it happens. And for lots of it also, yeah, like, just scent is, like, a thing that we use as, like, mammals, like, you know, like, it's, like, pheromones and stuff. So it mm -hmm. does make sense that it's used, particularly in, like, the love relationship. <laughs> pheromones were so strong. <laughs> right. Yeah. Your pheromones are <laughs> <on> my pheromones. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so very romantic. <laughs> yeah. So instead they just smell like sandalwood. That's way more romantic. <laughs> <laughs> used it before. I have said a character of mine smells like sandalwood, and I have no clue what sandalwood smells like. I could not point it out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I just found out the other day what sage smells like, and it smells okay. amazing. I knew what it was, I just didn't put the two together. Yeah. I don't know what that is. But sandalwood yeah. is always the, the, the go to scent. Mm -hmm. For any kind of it manly, kind of, uh, yes, my like, that so sounds yeah. manly. Sandalwood, <laughs> good enough. But I tweeted about it, and people yeah. felt really passionately about it. it. Lots of people <laughs> really knew what it smelled like. Oh, so I felt really out of it. Everyone who replied, aside from Emma, was like, "I actually know exactly what this smells like. It's really oh. nice." <laughs> well, I mean, that's good. Right? <laughs> I love well, it. Aren't you so <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go be stupid somewhere now. <laughs> Sandalwood smells really stupid good. Bed sheets yeah. or something. <laughs> oh, see, at least one of us knows what it's like. I'll go find a candle. Yeah, yeah exactly. I used to have a aroma diffuser thing. Uh, that had sandalwood. Like it made my room smell like sandalwood. So I, so I know what like it smells like. One a hero. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what it smells like. They <laughs> should change the name from Sandalwood to Hot Way Hero. <laughs> well, actually, there's a company, I don't, oh, I can't remember it off the top of my head. They're on Instagram. And they do, um, it's this girl who makes candles that are yes. scented like things in books. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, I've seen those. Characters or like places, and maybe mm -hmm. you should make one that's Sandalwood called <laughs> Hot Way Hero. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, should, I should message her about that. Yes. Let's see if she'll make it. Yes. So I guess like the big question is like why is it important to use all of the senses? Because like I was saying at the beginning, like it's really easy to use visual things because like that's how we like in in regular life that's how we describe something. You know, like if like there was a crime and you had to describe the person who did it, you wouldn't be describing what they smelled like but what they looked like. So I think that's like really easy to do in writing, but like I think it takes like more thought to put in other senses. Hmm. I think so, I almost always do yeah. it more in revisions. Yeah. <laughs> At yeah. Least yeah. I'm like, oh, well, there's be more of this. Well, I think it just rounds out a person more, just because you can look at someone and be like, oh, okay, they have brown hair. But if you can describe what, you know, their favorite T-shirt feels like, mm -hmm. or what they smell like, or what, um, what sounds they make when they walk, like just that kind of thing, I think makes you understand more about them. Mm -hmm. Just like the the way that yeah. they conduct themselves, the way that they they decide mm -hmm. to dress or walk or what have you. Yeah. 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 I think um, I think it's important to use like all the five senses in your writing is because we use our five senses to discover what's around us in our real life. Mm -hmm. So like we don't just see like when we're looking at something, we can also 
hear it, we smell it, we you know, we can feel it, and if you put that in your in your writing, it, it makes it. it more real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like a much yeah. more visceral experience when you have all mm-hmm. of it there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it creates a strong atmosphere. Just mm-hmm. like you yeah, can show is a good that word. it's creepy. You mm-hmm. can say like, oh, uh, there's cobwebs over here and a weird rustling sound over here. But then if you also say like a metallic taste flooded this character's mouth, you know like this place is making them panic. Like Yeah. So you can right. use it all to create like the full experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The senses help a lot with showing instead of telling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. like Oh go ahead. I was gonna say like yeah like I was saying like I think like sight is like our like primary sense that we rely on, but yeah, like we do have all the other senses, and a lot of times I think we don't think about it as much, but we do like know what yeah someone's footsteps sound like or what they smell like or you know like what the air smells like when it's gonna rain, and so like when you can bring that all in, it makes it feel like a more real experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'm uh, really I'm I'm not at my house right now. I'm on a small mm-hmm. vacation up the coast, um, and. Just today, I was walking on the beach, and the nicest part of it was that, you know, I can see the ocean. Oh, that's nice, but you can also feel the sun burning me, in my case, because I'm really pale. <laughs> but you can like, feel the sun coming down. You can smell the salt and the sand and fish and seaweed, and you can just kind of you, you embrace it. You feel this, the wind on your skin. You can feel the sun and smell everything, and it just kind of makes it more... You can feel the sand between your toes. Like, it's more of an experience than just being like, oh, I think of... I see that calendar picture of a relaxing beach. Yeah. Kind of, mm-hmm. like, it gets you more <laughs> in the moment. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yes, it's the difference between just looking at a picture of the beach and actually, like, walking on it. Mm-hmm. Right. I think Meg, mm-hmm. uh, Megan said the word atmosphere. I think that's the best word to describe. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. 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 <laughs> I think it's hard, too, because even if you're using all the other senses aside from sight, you can still tell it rather than showing it. Mm-hmm. Like, you could say, like... She felt the wood, and it was gritty, and she tasted acid, and it was gross. And so you still have to find ways to, like, take the B verbs out of it and, like, yeah. the, the verb for each of the senses out of it. Yeah, well, I remember, I remember back in, hard. like, a long time ago, I did a small writing just kind of class, and I mean, like long, long time ago, but we had to write poems, and it was always the first part of it was I feel, I see, I think, etc. Uh, and then at the very, like after we wrote them, we would just wipe the first part of it away, so you could just have the words themselves of what you saw and felt and tasted and all that. So it was more like getting into how to describe this. It wasn't just saying, like, I'm thinking about this, and I see this. It was more describing the atmosphere of it than it was personally seeing something, and I think that was a good thing. I guess the whole, like, see, don't, or don't tell, you know, sh- whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. Coffee hasn't kicked in yet. <laughs> yeah, we have a question here. Or are you going to say something? Okay. We have a question from Bright Neon Brilliancy. Have there been times when you had to research what something smells or feels like? For instance, I've had to research what a moor would smell like as I've never physically been to one. If so, how do you go about doing this? Hmm. Um, I think I, there I are some in the background of I think Rachel's video just said, err on the side of caution. What? <laughs> 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 Someone in the background in that coffee shop said that, and I was like, "Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Yeah, they're yelling out drink orders, so maybe someone's, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I, I was going to say, like, I had to, like, research what a ship sounded like, like, mm-hmm. the commands that, like, they would give on a ship, because I have never been on a pirate ship, and yet most of my stories <laughs> well, take place on one. So I had to, like, research, like, nautical terms and things like that, and I had to ask one of my friends who has actually been on, like, a boat before, like, what is real and what is more fictitious? It kind of makes a combination of what for my story. So, I mean, yeah, I have had to research what something sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. For smells, I like candles. 
I feel like they're obviously not perfect. You know, the beach candle mm -hmm. doesn't smell just like the beach. But I feel like it gives, like, a general, like, oh, well, this is kind of earthy. This is kind of fruity. Um, so I like that for smells. And a lot of it, like Desiree said, it's just, like, talking to people who have experienced it as well. Because mm -hmm. it'll never be, like, perfect until you smell a more or been to the beach or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but you can get a lot just from talking to other people who have experienced those things. Yeah. Definitely. And reading a lot of books. Yeah. <laughs> there are books that take place on moors. <laughs> yeah. Like Wuthering Heights. Yeah. Books. <laughs> and the more you read, the more you'll recognize like the tropes. Like mm -hmm. I recognized in my revisions that I shouldn't say someone smelled like sandalwood because everyone was saying that everyone smelled like sandalwood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I would research just more part of what it is. Like, if you're researching more, there's obviously going to be things there that are decaying, so maybe you would want to describe that, because you do know what that is like, instead of just mm -hmm. saying, like, ah, it's mm -hmm. not moorish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this comment from Die Facing Our Foes. It says... Um, maybe it's because I'm an extremely unvisual reader, but when some new place, character, or important object is introduced in a book, it's more important that the description has character than necessarily having like a bunch of senses. Um, Steve Otter descriptions, for example, almost never give you a detailed image of their exact ex appearance, but they still help you get a really good picture of what the descriptee is like. Mm -hmm. And I love yeah. Maggie Seawater descriptions, and I have been I looking at them trying so them. hard to figure out how yeah. the heck she does it. <laughs> I know, I can't yeah. tell them. I just... like that, that her, like, physical descriptions, like, give you a clue about the personality, too. Like, mm -hmm. it's not, yeah, it's not just like, oh, they have dark hair or something, you know, like, you know, you get things like, like, I think like, everyone's favorite is the one about how, like, Ronan, like, Looked like he like had such sharp edges he could cut you on them type thing you know like Gansey's yeah. boat shoes <laughs> yeah, yeah Gansey's boat shoes um, about Adam like Adam his his skin and his hair were all the same color it's of dust okay. or something yeah. like that or it was all mm -hmm. one color and yeah mm -hmm. I like that one yeah yeah and even just like the metaphors they still kind of appeal to the senses like when. Uh, she talks about how Gansey's afraid that someone will fall and impale themselves on Ronan, or when she says that Ronan slams the car door. Actually, he slams everything. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. Someday, <laughs> like 50 years from now, maybe I'll learn how to describe that well. For real. It's so it feels like it will never happen, though. <laughs> <clears throat> I think it's also like important to know what types of things your character will notice too. Like, yeah, what definitely. are the types of things they will clue in on? Because like that is like to go back to Raven Boys. This is just what we use as an example for everything now. Um, <laughs> like Blue specifically notices like Gansy's boat shoes because that bothers her because it's like an indication of like his preppy boy status, you know, so she's, like, looking for those things because she wants to be, like, confirmed right about what the Raven boys are like. So mm -hmm. there's, like, certain things she's noticing off the bat and then things she notices later on when she's, like, looking past those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A really good example of this is in Legend by Marie Lu. Um, you've got, like, the ruffian character and the soldier character. And, and she's super awesome. She yes. knows everything. Yeah. And so when Day gets into a room, he's noticing, like, the exits and, you know, who seems dangerous. And when June goes in, she's like, the walls are at a 90-degree angle and blah, blah, blah. Not necessarily that obvious. But, <laughs> um, like, really specific, more militaristic things that you would notice for a room. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really, really good example of showing, like, using the character's voice to help show things as well. Yeah. Um, we have a question from Leah. How do you balance out your descriptions? Mm. 
<laughs> I think oh, a lot of <laughs> helps a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, figure out what you're trying to describe. And if you're trying to describe a very large setting, I would say don't go for more than maybe like a paragraph, paragraph and a half. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you don't need to describe the pine needle on every single tree. You just need to say that there are a lot of pine trees and maybe you can describe the way they smell. Um, or if you're doing a person, just pick like certain things. So I think it's, mm -hmm. it's trying to like focus in on what you want the reader to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was going to say like... Yeah. Figure out what your like, what you want the character to know about the place or the person, and like focus on those things. And like you know the atmosphere you want to create in that setting or the characteristics you want to highlight in that character. Like focus on those things and don't worry about like all the extra stuff because we don't need to know everything mm -hmm. that the char that's yeah. like around the character. Because when you like go somewhere, you don't notice every single little detail a lot of the time. You focus on things that are important to the situation you're in. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. used to have this problem where I would describe like every single thing and oh mm -hmm. that person over there has brown hair and lighter skin and a purple shirt and this color pants and these shoes mm -hmm. and the girl next to her has this and this and it's like no yeah. one cares. Like literally no <laughs> one cares. I love describing <laughs> outfits when I was younger. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Detailed descriptions of outfits. A whole fan fiction yeah. just dedicated to people's outfits. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've always had the opposite problem, like I'm horrible with adding description. Like, I'll add, like, a little bit, maybe a sentence, maybe two. But I'm, like, I've always been so big on dialogue, so my problem is adding description. So what I always did is, like, when I was revising, I would highlight, like, all the description in blue and then highlight all the dialogue in yellow. So if there was too much of yellow on a page, add description somewhere in between it. And if there's too much blue on a page, add some yellow in between it. It kind of breaks oh, up. I like that. That's a good that idea. Mm -hmm. That can work well for people who over-describe as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, <laughs> I think I definitely was, I, I guess revisions is just when I went back and looked at my thing. I'm reading it. I'm like, oh my god. This <laughs> person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get rid of that, 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 cut that out. Mm -hmm. This is a, by no means like a formula you need to always use or anything, but um, what I like to do is for every couple of sentences, every one or two sentences description of something, I like to write at least another one after that of my character interacting with the scene. So if I into the room, there were cobwebs on the wall, a leg, so it was leaned over on one side. She then I would say something like, "Oh, well, she stepped in and dust poofed up at her feet, or something like something she is doing to directly interact with the scene, rather than just saying what the scene is." <laughs> so I love characters interacting with scenes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, and characters interacting with characters, like those are the best ways to describe anything, is how your character interacts with whatever the thing is you're describing. Yeah. Because really you're describing yeah. through your character's eyes. Mm -hmm. so, speaking of the raven voice, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's raven. a lot of really good descriptions from characters' eyes in there when they're like, taking in people like Blue always hones in on Gansey's boat shoes and like she tries not to look at them because she likes them better when she's not looking at them. Mm -hmm. And like Ronan, he looks at Blue and he's like, her outfit looks like a lampshade. Why? Oh, yeah, I forgot that. That was good. But it looked like a lampshade that Gansey would want. Yeah, Gansey would want. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a raise. And, and Ronan is not a fan of lamps. <laughs> Ah. Like anything. <laughs> Except for that one thing. <laughs> Except for maybe chainsaw. Exactly. Yeah. People are gonna be so Sorry. confused if they haven't read the Raven Boys and don't do what we're talking about. Yeah. Like really me. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Desiree's yeah. really I'm I'm Sorry, like, Desiree. Yeah. Totally. I know exactly what you guys are talking I'm about. I'm in on this. <laughs> Are there other books smile you guys think and of that do descriptions really well and like use senses really well? I'm trying to think. Hmm. 
Libba Bray always does a great job. Of course. She does um, a great job in yeah. everything. So that yeah. given. That's true. I really like, she does a very good job of the, the literary tool where you start, like, really far out and then you zoom in closer and closer and closer on something. Mm -hmm. Like in the first chapter of The Diviners, you know, you're the wind, and then you're moving in, and you're the house, and then you're inside, and there's the big group of people, and then you're the one girl who's pulling out the Ouija board and stuff. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Yeah, because she said that. That's hard to do well, and she mm -hmm. does it so well. So mm -hmm. well. Well, like looking at our bookshelves. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm in. I'm in a Starbucks, and I'm thinking, I'm like, okay. Just My like, bookshelf is all the way upstairs. <laughs> I'm like, what, are, what what books do I have? Like I know, right? I'm trying to think. Um. <laughs> I really like um, in the Lunar Chronicles because Cinder, the main character, is cyborg. She has like all these parts that like she has like a computer. Like her brain is basically a computer, and so she's always analyzing the way things look, or they smell, or they sound, and she's like mm -hmm. more sensitive to all those things. So I feel like there's a lot of sensory detail in that because of like the way she is that she like she can take in more sensory detail than a normal person can. That's and so Mr. Myers does a good job of like showing that she can do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember in I think it's the fourth one when she gets her her brain damaged mm -hmm. uh, or like the cyborg part of her damage, she's very lost and she doesn't know how to yeah. interact with the outside world because her her computer's gone. Yeah. Until she gets it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you have to read it to find out what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I was reading this is not quite book examples anymore. But I was researching a little bit like writing strong sentences and stuff because I think that's a huge part of having the senses come through well is just having well constructed sentences. Mm -hmm. And I found the, on Writer's Digest, I found the Four Commandments of Writing Good Sentences, and I liked all four of the commandments, so I figured I'd share them. Um, number one is, you shall not write passively, um, and we can talk a little bit more about what passive is after I say the other three, <laughs> but um, you shall not overuse weak verbs like to be and to have which we kind of mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, you shall not fluff, and you shall make every word necessary, which are the hard ones. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what was I going to yeah. say? <laughs> <laughs> I lost my train of thought. But those are the four commandments, yeah. and they're very solid commandments. Yeah, yeah. I think the those first two are like the really important ones that like, or the, they're like the most basic level ones that it's important to learn is that you can't just be like, it was cold and it smelled like this, and it like there was this sound. Like you have to find a way, like you were saying, to make your character interact with that space or with the char with the other character if you're describing another character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think another thing that's good for, for using five senses and just descriptions in general is n I'm going to quote somebody here and be pretentious and that is um, <laughs> Aswan Chekhov and he says don't tell me that the moon yes. is shining show me the glint of light on broken glass and I just yeah. love that quote so much because that's, that's like the best part of writing is just don't be like oh well you know, like the moon's out just be like there was light glinting on broken glass in the streets and that kind of thing. Like I love those kind of descriptions where it, it points out something small. And I know there was another something I read again online somewhere uh, from somebody that said something or other about um, <laughs> in, instead of having like a, I think it was a bombed out city. They were mentioning that there is a child doll burning in the street, and that mm -hmm. like that small detail makes it much more real than just saying like oh everything was crumpled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you said check off, and for a second I thought you were gonna say the same thing that I was, but mm -hmm. then it's a different check off. Oh, <laughs> I was going to mention. Oh, check off. Were you going to mention? Yeah, with regards to like the no fluff and no unnecessary descriptions. 
there's Chekhov's gun, which is the idea that if you have a gun in Act 1, then it needs to go off in Act 3. Oh. So, like, don't spend forever describing, like, the tablecloth and all of the little baubles on it if one of the baubles on the table isn't important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I do short films for fun. I was going to be a filmmaker, uh, a film major in college. Oh, you know, one of my ideas. But when I went through a film program, they said never show anything in a shot that isn't essential, essential to the story. And so I would translate that a lot to my writing. Like, if there's keys on the table, don't talk about the keys on the table unless those keys go to some secret door in the basement under a cellar, you know, in chapter 13 that are, that, and it's important. Yeah. Um, mm. <laughs> oh, I just thought of something. <laughs> Senses mm. of writing. Um, Rochelle Mead writes, uh, who writes, I think, the Little Vampire Academy, she writes another standalone called Soundless. Uh, mm -hmm. And this was, I, I, I liked the book, I didn't love it, but it was a great sense of senses because it's about a, it's like a fantasy novel, these people that live on top of a mountain who are deaf, and there's this whole deaf village, and one day, they're, they're minors, and one day all of their eyesight starts going as well. So the two main characters decide to hike down a mountain, and the main character uh, miraculously gets her hearing back, so that she can complete this quest. And it's it's very interesting because the way that she describes it obviously needs to be different than someone who can hear and someone who can't hear. And there there's multiple mentions of signing and sign language. Um, and I sign I know sign language, so that was really interesting to read. Uh, and it talks about how someone who is hearing for the first time would describe certain sounds mm -hmm. and how they see things. And oh, it was it was super neat. And I think anyone should just read that to see how you can describe yeah. the senses differently, even if you're used to sound and, and sight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like, yeah. In general, every character is going to interact with the world differently. Like, someone in the comments mentioned that um, they wrote a book that had a lot of, like, involved music a lot. Oh, yeah, the mm. work in progress has a lot to do with music. It was Janessa. Um, and so, like, she used, like, hearing a lot in that, which makes sense. Like, if you have, like, a character who's a musician, their ear is going to be very attuned to sound. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, speaking of sounds, um, Jordan Rado 7 mentioned in the comments uh, that for sounds, they try and build slash look for an atmosphere on www.ambient-mixer.com. The best. And I also love this website. They have <laughs> ambient sounds for all the Hogwarts common rooms. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Hmm. Uh, but uh, Jordan Rado 7 used it for the battle scene they were writing. Mm -hmm. They said it really helped them get into their character's head. Yeah, that's very cool. And yeah, yeah I, I think like, 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 listening okay. to sounds can super help, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, like, having your other senses stimulated is good. Like, I think as Erin has talked about how she used to, like, light the same candle every time she sat down to write. And I like that idea of having, like, something you can smell and, like, something you can hear while you're writing. Like sandalwood. Yeah, like sandalwood. <laughs> like a sandalwood candle. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what I'm get everyone for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> then Megan and I will finally know what it smells like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I like what Desiree was talking about with like filmmaking and like making sure like if if you like focus on something, it needs to be significant later on because that does really bug me when like something is focused on in a book or a movie like there's like a shot of something and it never comes up again I'm like yeah. why didn't you show me that like yeah. you spend the rest of the movie or the book expecting it to be significant and it isn't Can't that's my it. pet peeve like I yeah. cannot stand it like I hate it in movies but in books more so because yeah. I feel like the author was going to go down a path with whatever they described yeah. or talked about mm -hmm. and then completely like either cut it out of the story and forgot to cut it out in the beginning or yeah. just didn't 
cut it yeah, out they at thought all. it was cool looking, so they showed it. Yeah. yeah. And it goes for like describing characters uh, too. Like, like uh, this is so bad. The things you're showing and telling me about a character when I first meet them should be significant to that character later on. You know, like mm -hmm. if you're showing me that they're impatient, their impatience should like play into the story at some point. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is one thing. thing one of the things I hated about this this one book. I know a lot of people like it, so I'm sorry if there's you that like this, but uh, Hush Hush by Becky Fitzpatrick, I just hate just it. like it. There's a lot of negative you... feelings about that book on this channel. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Uh, I have not read it. I have to bother. Please don't bother. Um, but one of the things that she mentions in the beginning is that the main character, I, can see, I still remember this, <laughs> has, um, has an iron deficiency. And so she needs to take pills for her iron yeah. deficiency, and it never comes up again. That mm -hmm. that being said, I did not read the last one, so I have no idea maybe if it does. But mm -hmm. I remember reading that and being like, oh, okay, that's definitely going to be important. And then it never comes mm -hmm. up again. And I'm like, did you just do that for fun? Did you forget? <laughs> <laughs> like, what happened? Yeah. Which can play in two senses because, you know, you're feeling cold, or you're feeling shaky, or you're like, you're gonna faint, or something like that, if you don't have iron pills, and then, yeah. <laughs> surprise, you don't need them. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, I noticed that, too, when I read Hush Hush, because I'm anemic, and I was like, oh, cool! Like, let's see where this goes! Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> like, alright, well. Um, just a sec. I'm also eating dinner while we're chatting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's okay. Authors get hungry, too. Yeah. Safety. Health. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> but this can also be used super well to stress out your readers. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Like, <sighs> like, if you repeat a time over and over, like, perhaps it was 621, <laughs> um, that can super stress out your reader if they don't know, like, you've said it enough times now that they know it's going to be important. Mm -hmm. um, or, like, no if there's a why. gun on that table and you keep pointing out there is a gun on that table, it can amp up the tension mm -hmm. in anticipation of, like, they've said it a couple times now, this is going to go off and <laughs> yeah. it's not going to be yeah. good. <laughs> well, I'm going, to, I'm going to use another Raven Boys example. <laughs> well, 621, 621 was also a Raven Boys example. <laughs> oh, was it? Okay, I don't... I don't I don't know. This is the last book. You'll okay, get there. Okay. Okay, I'll figure it out. Um, but because I just finished reading Dream Thieves, which is the second one. Um, but at one point, there is this uh, this monster, for lack of a better word, and I'm trying not to spoil anything. <laughs> but uh, there's this monster that has these really long claws that when it was on the floor, it's tick tick tick, and you, mm -hmm. you can hear it. And you can mm -hmm. hear it coming down the hall. And I was mm -hmm. at this point, it was like 10:30 at night, and I was just like so stressed. Out. <laughs> So it's like, oh my god, the monster is coming. And I was um, with my mom at the time, and she's like, what's going on over there? I'm just like, there's a nightmare monster that's going to come, and it's really stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> so in that way, you can also... Yeah. Yeah, hype up tension. Andy Peppy pens almost yes. stress me out a lot. Anytime <laughs> she mentioned it, I was like, look out! <laughs> like, something's going to happen, I just know it. I just know it, and I'm bracing for impact. <laughs> Yeah. And every time his shoulders get wet, I was like, no! No! Is it now? Is that what it happens? It's so scary. Mm, yeah. It's so stressful. But yes, I love it. You can it. definitely use senses to stress out your readers. Yes, you can. Yeah. yeah. And it's terrible, and it's but also <laughs> wonderful. Yes, yeah. the sensation of bees that he keeps feeling, or hornets that he, like, as he keeps feeling on his skin, when you're like, you know they're not there, but he feels it, and just that, like, knowing how panicked he is, you can imagine it yourself. Yeah. You get panicked, which is, you know, if you're highly panicable, maybe don't do that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you're into the story, you know, it definitely helps move it along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And things like that, too, I feel like uh, do a really good job, also, of giving you a feel for certain aspects of, like, a character's personality. Like, mm -hmm. Gansey very obviously has PTSD from the Hornets yeah. in that time. Really I won't say specifically, because yeah. <laughs> I don't want to spoil, but it's in the first book you find out. But it's described really well, you know? He always 
feels like he's feeling them. Or thinks he hears something buzzing in his ears. Or Blue looks over and he's covering his ears. Mm -hmm. And it, it tells you a lot about character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I really have to read Pat, these books. Yeah. <laughs> you do. I'm going to be so sad if you don't like them. <laughs> yeah. It's like we hyped it up so much. I only yeah. speak in uh -oh. Raven Boy's references these days, so. <laughs> okay. More time has language. to pass before I settle down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like um, Jordan Rod 07's, and I totally agree with this. Um, he said, I think J.K. Rowling did that, like, talking about the whole, like, pointing out something and then making it important later. She did that best when she had them find the real locket in Order of the Phoenix, and it only became relevant in Deathly Hallows. I totally agree with that. Like, she's yeah. really good about that. Like a little thing. You're like, why did she mention that? And then like two books later it's important. Yeah. With the diadem I, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Little clues she's along the way. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, I really liked um well Ernest Klein in general. The, he does Ready Player One and he also does the other book, Armada. And I read Armada first and really enjoyed it. And everyone was raving about how good Ready Player One was. So I read it and very much so enjoyed it. It was so good. And he does it great in that as well because half of the book of Ready Player One is in virtual reality. So you do get some of the senses, but they're just they're in a really strange, twisted way because like technically you can feel them in this like virtual reality suit, but you can't really. So like trying to describe the senses without using the senses was just so yeah. trippy. And he does leave a couple of Easter eggs in uh, Ready Player One for Armada that I saw afterward just because <laughs> I had read Armada first. Um, but it, it's, it's like it's always fun finding those little little mm -hmm. things and why they're relevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you haven't already, read Ready Player One. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's like on my list, but I've just never gotten to it. Again, Not it was one of those things where I was like, I don't know if I'll like it, like, whatever, and then everyone was just hounding me, so I was like, fine, I'll read it, and I'm like, why did I not read this sooner? It's so yeah. good. It's wonderful. <laughs> It's fast-paced and awesome, and I have a book review on my blog. <laughs> um, uh, I just realized okay. we have a question on the Twitter. We've talked about it a little bit, but we could probably go into a little more depth. But Rachel asked, do you think there's a difference in... <laughs> yeah, you did. What did I ask? Yeah. You asked, do you think there's a difference in recognition and description of the senses based on who the main character is? Um, and we've definitely touched on this a little bit, but uh, I think yes. there are a lot of yeah, there are a lot of factors that can be brought into play um, mm -hmm. when like figuring out what things your character would notice. There's things like where they were raised. Um, so like if they were raised in poverty and they see something being wasted, they will notice that. Um, like Katniss at the Capitol, seeing people eating so much food and then not even finishing some of it. Yeah. Um, the people they were raised with, so like Blue is raised with psychics, um, and so she's much more attuned to those kinds of things. And also, like things that have happened to them in the past, like we talked about with Gansey and the wasps and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like everyone sees the world in different ways and interacts and like notices different things. Like whenever I go somewhere, I always notice like the music that's playing. Like even if it's like really faintly playing in a store or something, like I'll be like, oh, it's this song. And sometimes I'll be like, oh, this song is playing. And my husband will be like, I can't, like I can't even hear it, but like I can tell what song it is because it's just something that I notice when I go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like with me, like I always notice like exactly how many people are in a room. Yeah. And, like, where the doors are, because I have social anxiety. Mm -hmm. So, like, I have to know, like, how many people are in the room and, like, where the doors are at, like, all times. So that's just, like, from my perspective, I notice. But, like, I don't notice music when I walk into stores. Yeah. Hmm. I, as well. I do I, smells. I, I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I just, I always sit in corners. I'm sitting in a corner right now. I just, yeah, I go to the store and I, or a coffee shop or something, and I find where I can sit that I can see all the exits. So yep. I guess I'm some kind of survival skill kicking in there. 
I always have to sit in a corner. Like when I'm sitting in public, I'm like, all right, there is a corner right there. I'm going to sit here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, which is interesting because I've never been attacked or, you know, been needed to exit a building quickly or anything like that. I just like sitting in corners, yeah. being able to see everything. You're prepared yeah. based on all the like supernatural books you've read, you know. You never know what <laughs> monsters are gonna attack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It's> inevitable. <laughs> mm-hmm. We had another question um, from Alexander W. Um, they're talking about how they constantly aim to add diversity, and so they've been trying to write in the first person point of view of a boy that's blind, relying heavily on the other senses, um, such as touch and smell. Um, Do we have any advice or thoughts on how to describe something while omitting one of the major senses? Say, definitely do a lot of research on blindness and, like, talk to people who are blind and and learn about that. Because I know there are, like, stereotypes too like I've I've heard of people complain about the show Daredevil because like his superpower is his like senses are super enhanced and they're like that's a cliche about like blind people that you have like superpower senses you know and so yeah, yeah. so like, I, I would, would just, definitely research into it I would literally just, just how much it. I would literally just shut your eyes and yeah that's yeah like that's, mm-hmm. that's it Tie blind, hold on. I was gonna say. Like your sister's hair band if you really need something. Uh, but mm-hmm. just do that and then just like feel your way around before. Because I mean, like I did that when I was a kid and you know, you're just like playing games and stuff, and it's so difficult. I it's very like so much respect for people that can do that because I cannot. So I was reading an article today about a girl who had um, oh my goodness, this is terrible. I cannot remember the name of it. Um, but it's a disease where the cones in your eyes slowly burn out until you become blind. And it's usually over a period of, like, three to six months. Uh, and she was writing an article at the beginning when she first found out, and it was just kind of, like, slowly cutting out, and her having to learn how to see the world differently. Mm-hmm. And it's, mm-hmm. it, it must be so difficult. Yes. I mean, like, yeah. I can hardly find the light switch in the dark if I have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. So, like, I don't... I can't imagine someone having to do that mm-hmm. all the day. But, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> you need to figure out what, uh, what your bed feels like at night when you can't see. Just shut mm-hmm. your eyes and... And also, and like, think about whether or not, like, your character might have always been blind or might have become blind. So you have to think about that. Like, do they know what things look like? Have they ever seen the world or not? Yeah. You know? Mm. Um, if yeah. they've, like, always been blind, like, think, if you're going to describe something, think of how it feels and, like, what it smells like and what you would think it looks like if you couldn't already see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, something I would super recommend if you are um, writing from the perspective of someone who's blind or deaf or really just any sort of ability that you have that your character does not, I would highly recommend getting a beta reader or an editor mm-hmm. who is blind, like in the yeah. case of your character, to read it. I put a link down in the description to a website called Writing in the Margins. They have a database of sensitivity readers that you can hire like you would a regular editor. So, like, if you want someone who is blind, they probably have someone on that list who you could hire to sensitivity read yeah. your manuscript. And see, like, if you're falling into stereotypes or if you're inaccurately portraying something. Yeah. And it's definitely a good idea. If, if you're doing anything like that outside your experience and you're getting sensitivity readers, make sure you get at least two people because everyone's experience is not the same. So mm-hmm. it's always a good idea to have more than one person to look at it. Yeah. Definitely. yeah. Definitely do a lot of research, talk to people, and make sure you have people reading it to look for errors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, another great group to follow is on Tumblr, uh, it's called Disability in Kidlet, um, and they have a ton of great resources. They're always posting books that you can read or like to able people <laughs> and yeah. those sorts of things. I find it really, really uh, informative, but also like helps increase my awareness because I know that. Sometimes we say stupid things and not, we don't realize initially that it's a stupid thing to say, so it really, really has helped with my own 
self-awareness with regards to those things. Yeah. Um, a whole block. Check in the comments. Mm. Check in the comments. <laughs> well, we've we've talked on uh, about smell and sense. Uh, seeing stuff. My God, my brain just gone today. <laughs> <laughs> What if we not? Like, touch is a big one that we haven't really touched on yet. <laughs> touched on. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I think it's cool. There's a lot that goes into touch that you don't necessarily think of beyond just like feeling yeah. things with your hands. Hard. This is soft. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a huge one that I use a lot in my writing is like how things are physically affecting someone. I said this at the beginning a little bit, but like if your palms are sweating or if you're getting embarrassed and your cheeks are flushing, like you are feeling mm -hmm. your cheeks heat up. Mm -hmm. um, things like your mouth getting dry. Um, there's a great, great book called The Emotion Thesaurus by Angela Ackerman, and it covers pretty much every emotion you could ever feel, and it gives you, like, huge lists of, like, this is what they might be feeling mentally, this is what their body might be physically feeling, and I love it. I'm writing everything down that you guys are saying so I can look it up later. <laughs> like, everything you guys have said, I'm like, i got to write this down right now. <laughs> yeah, and I think, like, feeling is, is one of those senses that, like, we actually feel it a lot, <laughs> but, like, we don't think about it. But, like, we're always thinking about whether or not, like, the chair we're sitting in is comfortable or, you know, it's, like, the, like piece of wood we just touch is so rough we're worried about getting a splinter. Like it's something that's always around us yeah. that we're noticing even if we're not like actively thinking about it. So yeah. it's going it, I don't know, it helps me like make my story feel more grounded when my teach when my characters can feel things, like the ground under their feet or like the mm -hmm. like wall they're leaning against or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the, um, also if the character is like Say they're holding a sword, and maybe the pommel is wrapped in leather, and it's like really, you know, it's really rough, and it's yeah. like digging into their palm or something. That can add an extra layer of yeah, you know, like danger or sensitivity, or just kind of all around seriousness, perhaps. Because yeah. you know, if they're holding a sword, they're probably going to go into battle. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, one of my favorite times to use like the like feeling and touch. Is when my like when two characters are holding hands. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, because that's that I don't know why, but like whenever like I would hold hands with someone, mm -hmm. the way their hands felt was something I would really pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Like, are their hands rough? Are they smooth? But past that, like, are they like, are they defined? Like, can you feel their fingertips? Like, mm -hmm. are their nails long? Are their nails short? Like, yeah. are their fingers, like, long and narrow? Are they short and fat? You know, like, things yeah. like that. Like, the description of hands are just, is so interesting to me for some strange reason. <laughs> but I well, always, it, it always... It's probably a lot about a person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always describe hands. Yeah. I like to reflect, like, I like to have my characters be, like, physically uncomfortable to, like, reflect when they're, like emotionally uncomfortable in a situation like you know they're like really uncomfortable about a discussion they're having with someone and like the chair they're sitting on is really hard mm -hmm. or something like that because like when you're already like uncomfortable about a situation you notice all the ways that your body is uncomfortable too like it all is heightened so or if like something smells weird and that's bothering you while you're already like stressed out yeah mm -hmm. yeah I find it feeling too is nice because it's to me it's easier to show rather than tell mm -hmm. because like there are so many verbs you can use like yeah. <laughs> the shoes were rubbing mm -hmm. my heel they rubbed my heel don't want those to be verbs in there if they don't have to be <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> rubbed so I have that. 
You know. You know yeah. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Touch works for me because I like my characters to be physically uncomfortable most of the time. Yes. Can't let them get too comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> my characters are like traveling across a continent and camping all the time, so they're really uncomfortable. <laughs> Getting blisters on their feet. Getting like stabbed in the leg. You know, bad things happen. <laughs> <laughs> and as someone who has gone through many, many days with blisters on their feet, it's yeah. really not fun. It's not fun. And you, and you notice when you have blisters on your feet. It is the mm -hmm. only thing you can think about. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You <laughs> or like a, a sock sliding down your ankle. I've had that all day today. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I mean, there's like the tag on your shirt is like rubbing oh. your back the wrong way. Yeah. It's all you can think about when you're on your feet. feeling ankle. so uncomfortable. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh, and if it can do that just through talking, it can mm -hmm. definitely do it through words in a book. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, make people uncomfortable. Yeah. Great job. You've succeeded today. <laughs> um, we've got another. Comment slash question from Jordan Rado Seven. Um, they heard an author once say that it's best to concentrate on one thing when describing, and that's it. For example, if a character walks into the room and notices gunshot holes in the wall, um, after you describe that, then you should just continue the story. Um, do we agree? And this person often worries that it's kind of under describing the scene. Mm -hmm. I'd probably put in a little bit more. It doesn't have to be a ton more, um, because those are going to obviously be the focal point of what the character notices, but I don't think I would have to describe the entire room, nor would I just be like, oh, yeah. there's some casual bullet holes in the wall, I'll just keep walking. I'd probably notice more if I was yeah. walking by. I'd probably be like, oh my god, there's bullet holes, and then be like, oh, well, what else is wrong with this room? And then look around and be like, oh, it's yeah. really dusty or something. Like, that would be my I'd see bullet reaction. Holes, I'd be gone. There wouldn't need to be any more. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know we've said this a lot, but I think it definitely depends on your character. Like some characters are going to notice more about a room than other people are, and like some characters may not notice the room at all. They may just notice the people that are in it. While another character might ignore the people in it and focus on the room, like. Yeah. Right. But definitely, yeah. I would say only focus on like a couple things. Like don't try to describe everything in the room. Yeah. But I think I'm more than one thing personally. Or you can even stretch it out. Like I've noticed that a lot and I actually quite like that because it kind of gives you time to fill in your own idea of what the room slash person slash place is. Yeah. Uh, but it still gives you descriptions so you can first, like, let's say it's a person, you can first meet them and then be like, oh, I noticed that they smell like sandalwood. And then a couple <laughs> sentences later be like, oh, their hair looks really nice when they do that. And a couple sentences later be like, you know, oh, from this light, their nose looks really huge or something like that. So you can keep yeah. filling it in. <laughs> you don't yeah. have to have a paragraph describing uh, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. And I think, too, a lot of it depends on what the purpose of this scene is. Mm -hmm. For example, if this is an abandoned house, it's your character is going to notice more than just the fact that there are bullet holes in the wall. Like, there might be blood on the ground or a torn tablecloth that they're also going to take in. But if they walk in and there are bullet holes in the wall and then someone immediately starts shooting at them, <laughs> then the bullet holes in the wall should probably be the only thing that you're describing. So a lot of it depends mm -hmm. on like the action that's happening, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh -huh. But if your character is sitting bored in like a hospital waiting room, they're going to like notice everything about the room because they're yeah. sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and hopefully there are not bullet holes in the bullet holes in the wall in the hospital <laughs> waiting room, or else you should maybe go to a different hospital. Although, <laughs> that would make for a very interesting setting. I would yeah. eat a yeah. pediatrician reading. <laughs> mm -hmm. um. <clears throat> there was one. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah, that is a good question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for helping us draw this discussion out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think a huge part of getting description right is going to be revisions mm -hmm. and ha having yeah. good beta readers. 
because yeah. I know I've had descriptions before, and she's like, Magic. I make it a lot better. <laughs> and it gets better not because I was able to fix the description myself. Like, I needed someone else to tell me that what I was doing wasn't cutting it. Yeah. And I definitely think, like, if you try and spend too much time worrying about if you're describing enough or describing too much, like, yeah, you're never going to get through the scene. Because, you're, like, you need to focus on, like, the story and what's happening in your first draft and worry about what the place and the people look like and smell like and sound like later. <laughs> Yeah, or if you've described it too much, mm -hmm. worry about it later. Yeah, worry about it later. Um. Yeah, if you're an over-describer, like Rachel, just describe to your heart's content in the first draft. Fix it later. <laughs> if it makes you happy. Yeah, I yeah. just... When I was first yeah. writing it, I was like, oh, this is so cool. And then I just look back at it later, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is like ramble rambles for <laughs> like pages. I'm like, okay, i got to go this time out. <laughs> Yeah. And the great thing is, no one is going to be dis able to describe anything exactly like you, which is awesome. So, um, make sure you have a couple beta readers. If they both have issues with some of the things you're saying, then you should probably work on it. Um, but one thing that I think is really awesome about writing is that, like, there's always going to be a Maggie Steve Otter, like a person you really look up to who writes really beautiful things um, that you just don't have the experiences to write as well. And you are that. You are going to be that for someone else as well, which I think is amazing to consider. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That's a cool thought. Yeah. <laughs> and I think like just your descriptions only get better as you experience more yourself, you know, because when you actually get to go see a beach, you can describe a beach even better, or, you know, that's one of those things that just gets better as you age in your writing. True that. I believe we have been going for about an hour. I am refreshing things and not seeing more questions, so closing thoughts, anyone? Anybody, anybody at all. <laughs> Make sure you use the senses. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Definitely. They should all be in there somewhere, unless your character is like missing a sense. Then there should be even more of the other senses. Yes. Uh... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Also, six senses are great too. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if your book is one where that would be appropriate. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't write like a contemporary novel and someone has a sixth sense. Like, never actually, that'd be kind of interesting. <laughs> that is called magic realism. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> From what I understand, not great at defining magic realism. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, that's what it is. Magic I think realism. That is what it is. I have a love-hate relationship with magic realism, which is why I think I was worried at first to pick up the Raven Boys, because I was like, I don't know. <laughs> but it's slightly more, I want to say it's slightly more paranormal than it is magic realism, so I'm kind of it's okay. Such a yeah, I would consider like it genre all its own. Like, yeah, it's kind of all, and I don't yeah. mind it, like, I really quite like it. I just, I don't know. I like to call it rural fantasy, because it's not urban fantasy. Yeah. Rural. Rural. It's the middle of nowhere. Rural fantasy, which I think should be a genre. <laughs> more people yeah. should write I've heard some people call it, like, modern fantasy. But I've also heard that applied to fantasy worlds that are very modern. So... Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so complicated. Um, anyway. You want to take, take us out? Yeah. All right, so thank you <laughs> for watching tonight. Uh, we're going to have videos all this week, just like usual. And we'll be back next Sunday... Same time, same place. I think we are talking about, about families. Yeah, family. or family. yeah families yeah. in YA. So start thinking about your questions that you have for us. Um, and we will see you guys then. Bye. 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 Bye.